Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, listen, check the uh, link in the description and in the comments. Um, got downloads of all, almost all my old Bible studies, probably about 97, 98% of them. Uh, there are some fairly recent ones that are not on there, but there's enough to keep you busy. I did the math, and if you listen to two hours and 45 minutes of my Bible studies every day, it would take you a year before you heard them all. So, you know, got a lot of stuff there. This Bible study is going to be called fall on us. Now, the uh, place to start on this is the book of Hosea, H-O-S-E-A, chapter 10. You got to remember something that the Lord is going to pour out his wrath and I've heard people say, well, God's not going to pour out his wrath upon the church. Well, yes, that is generally true. But uh, when you love those that hate the Lord, guess what? He will pour out his wrath upon the church. What? What are you talking about, Chaplain Bob? Well, let's take a look. Now, a little background. I guess we're going to go to 2 Chronicles chapter 19 first. We're all starting verse 1. Now, Jerusalem was the capital of Judah. I think everybody knows that. But what a lot of people don't know is that Samaria was the capital of Israel. What? Chaplain Bob, don't you know that Israel and, and Jerusalem, Judah, is the same thing? Well, they're only the same thing to your pastors that uh, try to deceive you, or they're ignorant and have no business teaching the Bible to you if they don't know this. See, God split. When uh, Solomon's son died, I'm sorry, when Solomon died, his son took over. And he, the people asked him to, make our tax burden lighter. He says, not only am I not going to make your tax burden lighter, I'm going to make it harder. I'm going to make it so you, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to really tax you to death. So northern, the 10 northern tribes of Israel said, ah, no, I don't think so. We're out of here. You see to your, you see to it yourself. Well, then Israel got some bad kings, went into apostasy. God divorced them. And if you don't believe me, read Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 8. And I've got an entire study on Hosea in my playlist for as long as I'm up on YouTube anyways. And I've got an entire playlist on uh, You Only Have I Known, where I go through Hosea a lot. But in Jeremiah 3, 8, God divorced Israel, but not Judah. And then in Jeremiah 31, 31, God says he would remarry Israel and Judah. Two different kingdoms. They had different kings, different land areas. They even had wars against each other. I mean, think about the United States and the Civil War. You got the North and the South. They're both Americans, but they had different presidents. They had wars against each other. They lived in different areas. Uh, same people, but different. Uh, if you want to get into a fight, go down to Georgia and, and call everybody a Yankee. You'll get into a fight. Probably spit some uh, tobacco chew in your eye. Maybe. I never got the tobacco chew thing, but, you know. And uh, so here it is. In 2 Chronicles 19, verse 1, King Ahab, the wicked king of Israel, 
asked the good king Jehoshaphat, who was king of Judah. So the bad king asked the good king, Hey, uh, can you help me out? I'm having some problems here with these, uh, these people that I'm fighting. So good king Jehoshaphat said, Hey, no problem. I'll send some troops and we'll fight together because, hey, we're all, you know, we're all the same. We're all the same here, you know. But what Jehoshaphat didn't know was God sent these people to fight Jehoshaphat. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. People sent people to fight King Evil King Ahab as punishment. But Jehoshaphat, the good king, was going to try to, well, he was trying to thwart God's plan. He may not have understood that, but that's how that worked. And Ahab was a nasty king. Bad news. Matter of fact, the Bible says, that, And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. That's probably a paraphrase, but it's pretty blasted close to the truth. So, what happened here? Second Chronicles 19, verse 1. And Jehoshaphat, the good one, the king of Judah, returned to his home in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, uh, seer is just an Old Testament name for prophet, and Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him. So here it is, the seer, the prophet, went to go meet Jehoshaphat, the good king of Judah, and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly? Should you help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Good question. Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath, therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Well, guess what? If you're going to help the Lord's enemies, uh, God's wrath is upon you. Verse 3. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land. What do you mean by the groves? That's where all the witches would hang out, in the groves. All your nature worshipers, all your witches, witchcraft. They hang out in the groves. They did back then and they still do today. They don't do their little rituals in the cities. They go out in the middle of the woods. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, and that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. Ah, okay. Well, let me ask you a question here. Should we be helping those that hate the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, those of you that are longtime listeners, you know, you know better. But for those of you that have, uh, have no clue what I'm talking about, go to Google, type in these words. Noahide, N-O-A-H-I-D-E, space, Yeshu, Y-E-S-H-U. Read the article. Take you about three or four minutes, maybe five at the most, if you're a very, very, very slow reader. And then read how a certain group of people feel about Jesus. And ask yourself, should we... Help those that blaspheme Jesus Christ. Well, if you do, God's wrath is going to be upon those people. Uh, is there a big famous church in San Antonio, Texas that does this? Oh, yeah. Pastor's name, first name is John. Yeah. All right, let's go. Hosea chapter 10. Now, God had divorced Israel. Northern Israel, not Judah. He let them go into captivity with the Assyrian Empire. 
They were bad news bears, really bad news. So let's read Hosea chapter 10. Verse 1, Israel is an empty vine. Israel is an empty vine. Uh, you know, what good is a grapevine if there's no grapes on it? You know, there's no fruit. Well, that's what he is comparing Israel to, not Judah. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself, according to the multitude of his fruit. He hath increased the altars, according to the goodness of the land. They have made goodly images. Now remember, idols and images have very similar meanings. And are these altars to the Lord? No, they're the groves. They're the, where the Satanists are. Verse 2, their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. They shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. For now they shall say, we have no king, because we feared not the Lord. What then should a king do to us? They have spoken words, swearing falsely in making a covenant. Thus judgment springeth up as hemlock in the furrows of the field. Now remember, hemlock is poison. So the judgment's going to spring up like poison in the furrows of the field. That's a planting term for those of you that are not farmers. You know, you'd plant in the furrow. You know, it's a, a, a hole in the ground. Well, it's actually like a trench. You break up the ground so that the plant has an easy chance for the roots to go down. The inhabitants of Samaria shall fear because of the calves of Beth Haven. For the people thereof shall mourn over it, and the priests thereof that rejoiced on it, for the glory thereof, because it is departed from it. It shall be also carried unto Assyria. Remember, there, Israel's being carried away into Assyria, the captive, uh, as slaves, basically. It shall be also carried unto Assyria for a present to King Jerob. Ephraim shall receive shame, and Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel. Uh, Ephraim was the main tribe in Israel, northern Israel. Verse 7, as for Samaria, her king is cut off as the foam upon the water. All right, verse 8, very important, keep this in mind. Now remember, when they talk about high places, they're talking about places of worship, but not worship of the Lord in heaven. They're talking about worship of the fallen angels. Verse 8, the high places also of Avon, the sin of Israel, the sin of Israel shall be destroyed. The thorn and the thistle shall come up on their altars. Where's that phrase thorn and thistle come from? Well, thorns and thistles. First time that appears is in Genesis 3 and verse 18. Uh, remember, Adam, well, Eve ate of the fruit of the garden that she wasn't supposed to go near and touch, remember? And then Adam did also. Let's read Genesis chapter 3, 17. And unto Adam, he, God, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground from thy sake. For uh, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat. Uh, shalt thou eat bread till thou in turn return unto the ground for out of it 
Wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. In other words, when you're trying to grow a garden, you're going to get thorns and thistles. And you can't eat thorns and you can't eat thistles. You're going to try to grow bread and you're going to get thorns and thistles. So, back to Hosea 10. The high places also of Avon, the sin of Israel, shall be destroyed. The thorn and the thistle shall come up on their altars, and they shall say to the mountains, Listen carefully. And they shall say to the mountains, Cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. Remember? That is the uh, name of this uh, Bible study, fall on us. See, when the Assyrians, who were God's judgment on the wickedness of Israel, were to come into the land, the people are going to say to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. Hide us from God's wrath from the Assyrians. The Assyrians were bad people. They were bad. See, the Assyrians took Israel into captivity, and then... A uh, number of years later, I think like a hundred and something years later, the Babylonians came and took Judah into captivity. Well, the Assyrians took part of Judah into captivity too, but they couldn't take Jerusalem. Cover us. And they shall say to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills fall on us. O Israel, thou hast sinned from the days of Gibeah, there they stood. The battle in Gibeah against the children of iniquity did not overtake them. It is in my desire that I should chastise them. Oh yeah, God's going to spank them. And the people shall be gathered against them when they shall bind themselves in their two furrows. And Ephraim is, an, is as an heifer that is taught and loveth to tread out the corn. But I passed over upon her fair neck I will make Ephraim to ride, Judah shall plow, and Jacob shall break his clods. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Oh yeah. Ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity, ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. Therefore shall a tumult arise among thy people, and all thy fortresses shall be spoiled, as Shalman spoiled Beth Arbel in the day of battle. The mother was dashed in pieces upon her children. So shall Bethel do unto you because of your great wickedness. In a morning shall the king of Israel utterly be cut off. So, when God's judgment comes, people are going to be saying, cover us and fall on us. Think about all those rich, wicked tech giant people who uh, they're building their little underground shelters. You think when Christ returns, they're going to be safe? I don't think so. Well, matter of fact, I know so, but you know. All right. Where else does this fall on us? Where else can we find this? Turn to the book of Luke. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 23. Uh, I'm not sure. I think we're going to go do verse 20. Little background here. This is the uh, trial of Jesus where they're getting ready to crucify him. So keep that in mind. Uh, Luke 23, 20. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. All right, so here it is. You've always heard, oh yeah, Rome killed Jesus. Well, my Bible says Pilate, therefore willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, 
Crucify him! Crucify him! And he said unto them, And he said unto them the third time, Why? What evil hath he done? I found, I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. Uh, these are not Catholic priests, by the way. No. There are the other priests. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto him, and he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem. All right, so this is Jesus speaking. Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. Listen carefully. Verse 30. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us. And to the hills, Cover us. You see, Jerusalem, about uh, 35 or so years later, about, would be destroyed by the Romans. Totally, completely destroyed. Just like the Assyrians destroyed Samaria and Israel, so would the Romans come and destroy Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was also destroyed prior to that by the Babylonians. King Nebuchadnezzar, perhaps you've heard of him. And guess what? Jerusalem, the very same date that Rome destroyed Jerusalem, is the exact same date that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, destroyed Jerusalem. Uh, coincidence? I think not. The same exact day. The Lord is sending them a message. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? So then you could keep reading and find out that... Um, Christ was crucified. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. So, in other words, there's going to be a lot of war. And that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. A measure of wheat and three measures of barley is like 
a loaf of bread. And what is a penny? Well, a penny's not a penny as today, but um, a penny was a was a day's wage for an unskilled laborer back in those days. So basically, a loaf of bread is going to take a day's wage for an unpaid, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, for an unskilled laborer, a day's wage. So, uh, yeah. So evidently, food is going to be scarce. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see, verse 8. And I looked to behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. Death. A pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Wow. So there's going to be war, hunger, death, and beasts of the earth. Uh, Four-legged or two-legged beasts. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying... Who's crying here? The souls under the altar. When you hear people say, oh, soul sleep, you don't know, you know, you're when you go, when you die, you're just asleep until the Lord awakens you and gives you your resurrected body. That's not what the Bible says here. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? See, the souls that are under the altar are crying out and speaking. Soul sleep is unbiblical. How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Lord, they killed us. Avenge us. That's the Bob translation. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Now just think, if the pre-trib rapture had happened, why are these people under the altar and why are they waiting for more people to die? That don't make no sense. Think about it. Think about it. If the marriage supper of the Lamb was happening while the tribulation period is going on on down earth, these people should be at the marriage supper of the Lamb right now. But instead, they're under the altar. And they're waiting a little while until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Think about it. Pre-trib rapture doesn't make any sense. Verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. You should read this in uh, conjunction with Revel. Uh, I'm sorry. You should read this in conjunction with Matthew 24 and Mark 24. 13. And in the book of Joel, it talks about uh, the sun becoming black and the moon becoming his blood. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became his blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Boy, that is one earthquake. Listen to this carefully. Oh yeah, all you rich, ultra rich people that have got your little uh, doomsday bunkers. Oh, here you go. 
Verse 15, Revelation 6, 15, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, yeah, all these rich people are, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? That's a good question. You see, people, the wicked are going to hide themselves in the earth. They're little doomsday bunkers, but it ain't going to do them no good at all. Lord's going to dig them out of there. And then, well, maybe he'll, uh, maybe he'll use it to bury their bodies there. I don't know. Lord knows. I'm just guessing. So I hope you enjoyed this Bible study. Like I said, download all my Bibles. Well, not all of them, but like 98% of all my Bible studies in the link. I got two strikes on my channel. One more and I'm gone. And, uh, you know, what can I tell you? I'm getting tired of loading Bible studies and having people delete them. I'm sick of it. You know, I know everybody says, oh, yeah, start another channel. People, it takes me months to upload all this stuff. Months. I mean, you know, I could be working. I could be doing things to make money. And I'm not really complaining, but I'm just saying, you know, it takes me hours and hours and hours to, to load all this stuff, and it takes them seconds to delete it. It hardly seems uh, worthwhile sometimes. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm just saying, it gets depressing, people. It really does. So... Download the works, the Bible stuff, and uh, like I say, I don't copyright anything. So anybody wants to load anything to another, create, create a channel, load the stuff or whatever, that's up to you. I I don't do copyright claims. Everything's done to the glory of Jesus. I copyright nothing. So all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.